subject to dither, and I can filler uh, finally invariant form manifolds, and invariant of smooth form manifolds, and then from the bottom of Now, uh, since uh, So the first question to ask is uh, why yet another invariant format for it? And uh, the answer to that is relatively simple. Obviously, we had to try it. We went away and learned how to compute the large model and do everything. We could go away for weeks and weeks, and it was zero. So uh, that was a little bit sad, but it had a nice consequence, which was that immediately thereafter, uh, actual showing that the example we were looking at was actually just the four sphere anyway. Uh, and <laughs> a little bit later, uh, John Manuel Rocha proved something about the bottom homology and actually said that his full attempt was doomed. Uh, and the approach we were taking was guaranteed to have a sequence zero uh, to start with any trace. Okay, so that was all, all a bad idea. Uh, but there's more information in the bottom of the moment than just the essence of it. There's still something to try to do. And uh, this story uh, is an explanation of uh, something that you might try to do. Now, to make the connection back with uh, the representation theory, what I want to say is that. The way we build this invariant isn't just some crazy procedure, it follows a, a very sensible recipe, which is that we, first of all, write down a, or construct a four category out of the bottom of the model. And then with that four category, we follow a very standard TQFT recipe for making invariants of invariants. So really, this talk is about the four category and the invariants of and the consequences of the, of the four category. Now, what is that four category? Well, this is where the representation theorist come into the case of Platinum uh, This whole category is, is basically uh, the representation theory of the Bonner Bonner's calculator of the EQS. I'm not going to go into here all of that stuff, I know that stuff. Uh, I'm just going to show you how, pretty much with your bare hands, with the, with the fictional definition of the Bonner homology, the very first section of the subject, you can, you can write down this whole category. Let's do a little bit of a warm up and I'll spend a little while talking really about the Jones polynomial and uh, the three pattern you can build the Jones polynomial. And after we've gone through that, we can finally talk about this. The Jones polynomial is an invariant of the Uh, 
saying that it's easy to compute, uh, it's also easy to construct an integration. Meaning, if you just directly with bare hands, uh, show that this is an invariant or not, it doesn't just, if you follow these rules, uh, it doesn't just give you a representation of much more things. That's just to say that you can take the value mass of rules uh, and do some little calculations. Thing that I'm going to use uh, is uh, something called the uh, display of categories. Which are uh, a fairly convenient way to talk about categories or n categories that have topological properties. And the, the main idea is specify a display n category. substance of the following ball. And then I define the group story at the top level. And the 
this case, I'll show you one, okay? First approximation. I want to give you Then entanglements in that ball, initial value, sometimes working points. Uh, but I want to make this life a little bit more complicated by allowing linear combinations, formal linear combinations of embedded entanglements in the ball. that allowed formal linear combinations, I can take a quotient in this vector space, uh, and the quotient here just determines whether it needs a very middle forward, in times of crossing, until that tangle is equal to this linear combination. Uh, one slightly annoying thing going on here is that uh, when I say linear combinations, I only want to think about linear combinations have exactly the same set of two points in the thing that allow linear combinations on tangles and on tangles. Okay, that's all there is to it. Uh, that's the, the data of all of the sets of amorphisms in this, in this category. So, uh, why does this deserve to be called a free point? Here's the solid wall set, the trigger ball. Uh, and I'm doing this in such a way that uh, what I get is another key ball. Level over here, this has nothing much to do with these levels, obviously. Pull together finite sets and of walls, and pull them together, and you can do walls together. Well, as long as the boundary data matches up, uh, then you can do this. Not what so, does it mean to mod out the Jones relation? Because it seems to depend on a convention. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm really saying that uh, anytime you see in some little key ball sitting inside this picture, Dimensional tangle, things like that. It basically uh, means the same thing. Let's say I pick once and for all a particular tangle in this 
on the other end. Okay? And so if you keep this particular thing, you get it exactly that point. And you have in place of that one point. And now, if you see any guy and you get a tangle here, you're also allowed to replace it with something like a dot. Literally, it's generated. So, uh, okay, we have more systems that you can take, we know how to group them together, uh, and I mean, obviously, if you're trying to wrap out the axes, it's just like any pattern. Uh, you, uh, I mean, this loom, this loom information is part of the data, because it is in the end. Uh, maybe one more thing to say. Describe the exact procedure, but just tell you the answer. Understand what the procedure was. So I can be manageable. Right, the J here is our pattern, and I'll show you the program we need it. And get some variance. What's J then look like? Well, one way to say it is just the same one.
that you can uh, sort of kind of put in this construction in more general in more generality and start with some disk like tree category. Well, the idea is just to take your manifold, chop it up into lots of balls. On each ball, you put uh, an appropriate tape organism in such a way that the boundary data matches up to the manifold tree, and then you impose this relation. Erasing balls, which is balls. But ignore that, that general procedure. It's pretty obvious that this three category is just sort of some local pictures of balls and the manifold is very nice. Well, the same pictures on the manifold in the first place. So much like this. Okay. So, what to say about this vector space? associated with the mapping cylinder. That is uh, some very particular four manifolds. Four manifolds are just like cylinders uh, give us linear maps uh, between the vector space. Now, uh, what is this sum? Well, for the Jones polynomial, that's uh, uh, this condition. If you need uh, sort of finding this condition in the category, you need to be able to do this construction in exactly the A and B. Invariant uh, of a three manifold of 
Maybe they can say this obviously works the same way as the P manifold is down. This uh, this manifold has some has some P manifold down here. Maybe I specify some finite collection of points in this angle, so it's not that kind of way. Same same model. Okay, that's the same model. Yeah. So for the jokes point on your invariant of the pre manifold really depends on the on the integration. Much just an invariant effect. The closest P manifolds, the Jones point of this thing is just not the one. And a similar thing happens uh, to four manifolds that uh, really only depend on the boundary of the P manifolds. So in this case, uh, we have this great confusion thing going on. Uh, it's dimensional. This setting counts for Jones reduction. These are the ratios you can derive. Tell you the story of the Kavanaugh homology uh, without this dimensional reduction. So I'm going to be solving some vector spaces for four manifolds, well, and nothing at all for five manifolds, because I'm not dealing with the bit stuff. But you should keep your mind open. Maybe everything reduces. And the thing I'm describing is really a vector space value invariant of three manifolds instead of four manifolds. That's the example. But the reason this happens, that this dimensional reduction happens, Really, all you need to have got out of everything I've said so far is this situation. You can think about using three manifolds to modulate the Jones of the And you're getting this. Okay. Let's hang you up. What is the problem? Just need this black box. So 
what we're supposed to say for now. Zero In that case, there's no polynomial, no linear combinations here, no upper isotopy, no relation, really just you know, ridiculously like sort of actual equations and tangents. Really sort of the philosophy going on here is really sort of the people who are doing in categories just sort of push all the trouble off. Say, well, let's look at this four ball with specific boundary conditions. Say, let's look at this four ball with what the boundary conditions look like. Boundary conditions are something that when you restrict to each three ball of the boundary, you get a tangle, which is just saying the boundary conditions are the limit of the boundary conditions. Okay? And we can specify the set for you. 
which has been said, well, it's criminal. Well, that is the one thing that we talked about in the academics of all the languages. Okay? Definitely in finance. Okay? So there's the case. So there's more data, of course, in really specifying uh, what one of the research categories is, and then you tell you what the doing is. And now it's not quite so obvious. It's obvious how you group demorphisms together. Is it these demorphisms are just pretty much two subanalogs? So let's look at the case for the two balls. About the case for the two balls. Let's put another group in Into this one, and that one over there. Okay, so this is just uh, exploratory. It appears uh, is in my turn up here, but it's uh, a different side of that. Is um, it appears that's our P2 there, and then let's look at it here. Uh, is our other copy of P2? Let's try and do this. I'm just, going to, I'm just going to draw a picture of what happens uh, as I move in. Stop motion animation. Uh, so first of all, I just apply a saddle to the ones that these two are here. Connecting them together. Okay. And now I see that these two crossings match up and I can just go right out to them. I know what the expanse is. Now at this point, I could be clever if I wanted to straight it out, straight out that line. So let's just be completely dark. I'm just going to keep following the recipe. Follow those two, saddle those two together. And then I'll convert my two paracritical points. So I'll cancel those out, but really want to have this show itself that uh, that line is going to be uh, possibly possible. Okay, I just drew you a bit more. So you start out with this confusion, you go with this, and go with this. If you want to follow the rubric, there's also plenty of math to say something. Define the Gluing map to be uh, that the voice that you just drew applies to it. Now, there are some things one needs to check uh, that this really makes sense. Uh, and in particular, something that you would really like to be true is that you group three balls together by going 
through the first and then a third one, or you put in the other orders, you get exactly the same thing you have to do today. Uh, and that just checking properties like that, this one here, the fact that the voice of the jitterbyte isotope, you put the same thing you map by the last morphology, and if you follow it through the surfaces that you would use to put these together with the succession, just by changing the types of, of the work of the saddles and so on, you would see that the, the surface is like this. Okay. Spin this 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 strand here around the tank. It's a it's the arch triangle. Quite into the screen behind the tank. Go up all the steps. So it comes out the other side, and you keep going to get back to uh, where you started. So seeing that this construction works comes down to seeing that in Kerbonov homology, this particular curvodism is always dead in and out of infinity. Now, Kerbonov homology is defined, and the IP really is sort of constructed, defined in terms of itemizing the different projections in the cloud, which means that this could be arbitrarily broken. This tank is like many crosses inside of it, and it will pull the string behind by doing arbitrarily many itemized strings. What do you do? roughly that you get for exam. Uh, and you get one little consolation. Uh, characteristic two. Just a little bit. Uh, and basically the story there is that uh, writing down the proposal is associated to uh, well, writing down you know the, the chain maps with all the right amounts Simpler. And in particular, the way that it looks simpler is that all the components of the chain maps for randomizing the units of character to are actually induced by almost every voice. You can see this sort of uh, infinity. You can do something that you, that you can't do when you're trying to work everything. Okay, so we've got that. And Then following your nose, you get uh, an invariant four manifolds. Um, no, I didn't say it doesn't. Um, I, uh, I remain untrue. I, I, I more often try to prove that it doesn't work. Um, if, it, if it doesn't work, it's going to be because something. Combinations. Then the four manifold 
inside that four manifold, I designed a few balls. Uh, on the boundary of those four balls, I called something. Inside those four balls, I've written a label living in the Kavana form of that link. And in the remaining region, I've drawn some surface uh, in the remaining region. And what's the relation going on? We have to do this modulo sum. that whole picture with just a single bigger cutout four ball labeled by the surface sigma acting on these elements of the common So you can always inflate one of these balls a bit, swallowing up the surface at the expense of that surface acting on the element of the common form sitting inside that label. And balls can also merge together and just replace two balls that are near each other with a ball that This is just a, the answer that comes out when we say some machinery on the four pattern is described. And this is some absolutely horrific, absolutely horrific caricature of this. It's still Delta Grade. So it matches Delta Grade and stuff. This is Delta Grade. Okay. So now for some more bad news. Wayne's uh, rule.
we're excited. Uh, um, so, with that exact kind of uh, what did you try to do to do a conversation? Uh, any time you have your full manifold given as uh, W equals uh, W1, put along some free manifold with W2, what do you do? Suppose you can calculate the quantum homology of all the pieces here, which means that you know. this with sort of all different kinds of uh, say whatever uh, whatever tangles you put on the uh, in the side. Well then in a very natural way this vector space here becomes modular over this vector space just because you can do the biggest space and you can follow so on to the W one. And the general teacher of conformalism tells you that for example the one of the model of this guy is just a tensor product this vector space is that one. Unfortunately, identifying the structures in Galvin is easy. The bottomless version is even worse. That's the issue. Uh, so, you said that the ordinary way is supposed to be to send out the vector to the other Okay. Um, I mean, so to, first of all, it's the right sort of thing in the sense that the representation theory is a QQSL2, it's a graded monoidal category, so it's the same thing as saying a three category that makes the bottom two levels boring. And this thing is a four category that makes the bottom two levels boring, which means that if you prefer thinking about graded monoidal two categories, which we do like pity you, because this is a graded monoidal two category to have. And so that's the sort of thing you expect from the representation theory in categorical Now, um, now uh, but, but I mean, you can you can say more. So uh, if you were going to write down a function from here to They're going to be written down in different sorts of four categories at first. Which is what we're going to send across them to? Well, we're going to send across them to the complex of whatever gadgets you're using to, to think about the, the uh, to think about the, the categorification of the gradient, and uh, then uh, when you want to think now about the morphism between the space of morphism. Chain maps from, from the complex of sort of the one chain and the chain maps closer to each chain from other chains. It's the same thing with the combined homology that we can get back from the second chain. Okay. Um, well, I mean, this is, this is just a nestle two sort of thing. Uh, oh, oh. Of the 
give me maps for what the borders of the key one were in quantum technology and the graphing numbers. It's just different in Japanese and Hong Kong. Well, I'd say Japanese, that's just my preference. Um, and I mean, I, uh, I don't know much. 